Hello again, watch friends. Welcome back. Just a short video today on what I call watch enthusiast etiquette. We've all seen this. Someone posts a picture of their new watch on a watch channel or group, and then some idiot asks how much did it cost. First, asking what someone paid for an item is rude. Period. Second, this information is readily available. It's one thing if someone posts their watch and it's unfamiliar to me, I'll ask what the reference number is. Then I can easily go to the brand's website, Chrono 24, Time of Switzerland, or even Joma Shop to get an idea of the cost of the piece, if I'm so inclined. Don't be rude or lazy. There are plenty of online resources to get whatever information you want. Now, if you'd like to know where the owner of that new watch purchased it, or maybe if a deal is to be had, contact them individually. My experience is that most watch people are more than willing to share information and help other watch collectors. Just don't ask that sensitive information in a public forum. Speaking of lazy, there are two examples of this lack of etiquette. One is where someone posts about a particular watch, provides the details, and then you see a response asking for something that was already mentioned in the post, or that was already mentioned in the thread of the post. Don't be lazy. Read the posts. Follow the threads. It's not very difficult. And be respectful to the original poster, the responders, and the topic. The other example is asking questions for which you can easily find out the answers yourself. This is sort of a variant to the above faux pas regarding asking about prices paid. Here, a question is asked that is easily answered yourself. In fact, in answering the question yourself, you not only get the answer to the question, but you often learn a thing or two or three in the process. For example, say I'm going to be in Munich and would like to visit one of the small independent watchmakers, like Henschel, in their shop in Hamburg. Rather than asking Mr. Henschel how far it is from Munich to Hamburg, Google it yourself, as I did, and learned about where Hamburg is, where Glasuta is, and where Dornbluth has their shops in Kelba. All good information and related to my initial query, and perhaps useful for a future trip. When someone shares a watch that you don't particularly like, you have several options. One is to scroll on and look at the next post or video. Nothing to see here. Move on. Or you can respond, but in one of two ways, negatively or positively. A negative response, such as, what a piece of crap, or some such thing, says more about you than it does about the watch. It also stops the conversation cold. The other way to respond is to say why you don't like it. For example, the case is too big for your wrist, or you just don't like Roman numerals, or whatever. But do it in such a way as not to be insulting. Of course, if you like the watch, or the photograph is particularly well done, say so, and explain why. Part of the fun of watch collecting is to give and take with other collectors, sharing information and learning new things. We're all in this together, after all. There are a few things you should keep in mind when visiting an authorized dealer, or AD. Most, if not all of these, are common sense, but I know for a fact that some watch enthusiasts don't follow them. The most important is to be polite and show how your upbringing included good manners. Ask before you can handle a watch, regardless of the price of it. Ask if you can wind it or set it. Be respectful of the sales associate, even if it becomes obvious that you know more about the watch or even the brand than they do. It's fun to see and handle a variety of new watches, whether you plan to buy or just want to learn about them. The sales associate's job is to sell watches, so they are more than willing to show you whatever you want. However, don't overstay your welcome and perhaps waste their time if there are other customers in the shop. And by the way, don't forget to ask for those free watch catalogs. Finally, it makes no sense and wastes everyone's time to ask questions that cannot be answered. For example, if you are buying a watch from someone, asking about its pedigree is usually non-answerable. If I'm selling a watch, I know where I got it from. But before that, I have no idea. Therefore, I can't answer that question. 
In the same example of buying a watch, asking someone what their best price is is also a question that cannot be answered and is, on the face of it, a dumb question since the best price for the seller is the one that gets them the most money. Anyway, if you want to haggle over the price of a watch, ask politely if they will take X dollars for it. It's then up to the seller to decide if they will or won't accept that offer. Or maybe they will come back with a counteroffer. That's what negotiating is all about. I promised to keep this video short, and I did. Just a few examples of watch enthusiast etiquette that will make your participation in this hobby more enjoyable. Do you have any advice or examples of either good or bad watch-related etiquette? Share your comments below, and please be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you like this video and want to see more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.